Hello and welcome to another hands-on engineering video. In this video, we'll be going over the three C's of cache misses. The goal of this lesson is to learn about different types of cache misses and how we can run simulations to classify a series of memory accesses. So why are we studying this? Well, we know in general that we have expensive fast memory and cheap slow memory. And from lecture, we discussed a memory hierarchy to balance these trade-offs. However, a cache is only as good as its hit rate, which leads to some idea of performance. We need a general way to think about cache performance, and today's topic will provide us with a guideline of how to do that. So here are some useful things to keep in mind when studying caches and approaching these problems. When you're told you're dealing with something like a two-way set, that means that the cache is associative and has two blocks for every set. Blocks and lines are synonyms and just refer to contiguous segments of data. This table of binary prefixes is helpful because when dealing with larger memory units, we often refer to things in kilo, mega, and gigabytes. I personally think that these are good things to consider having on a cheat sheet, just to quickly reference. So here is our first knowledge check. This is testing the skill of being able to quickly identify key features of a cache given its description. Pause the video and give it a try, and I'll be moving on to the answers and explaining it. So, assuming that you've given these a try, question one can be tricky if you don't understand that cache line is synonymous with cache block. So this question is really just asking how many blocks are in the cache? You can see that the equation shows how to get the answer of four blocks. We just take the cache size and divide it by the block size. Question two is asking if you understand what it means to be two-way. Remember that if you have a k-way cache, then you have k blocks per set. So if you have two blocks per set, and from question one we know that there are four blocks total in the cache, then we must have two sets. Now let's introduce the three C's. It's important to note that these are just guidelines on how to classify misses. It gives us a good general idea but following the recommendations on how to reduce each type of miss does not guarantee performance improvements. What we do is we'll take a series of memory references and run them on three simulations. Each simulation will detect different types of misses. Our first type is the compulsory miss, or cold start miss. This is because our cache starts off empty, so the first reference to an address must miss. The second type is a capacity miss. This means that if our cache was large enough, we would have had a hit. Finally we have the conflict miss. This means that the data we want got replaced and it's due to the associativity of the set since it means that another address is mapping to the same line or conflicting with it. So here's a quick check. Go ahead and pause the video and give it a try. So assuming that you've given these a try, let's go over it. The first one is false because the three C's are a little phony and they're not hard and fast rules. The second question is just a synonym. Cold start and compulsory miss are the same thing. And the third question is asking why we're doing all this in the first place. And the answer is to get some performance metrics. And finally, the way that we actually use the three C's is to run some simulations. So now on to actually classifying a series of references. We're going to run three different simulations. And on the next slide, we'll talk about why we're doing these particular configurations. First, we pretend that we have an infinite fully associative cache. We simulate every single memory reference against this pretend cache and anything that's a miss gets marked down as a compulsory miss. Next, we put a size limit on our imaginary cache. So now we have a fully associative cache with the same size as the actual cache that we're considering. Every miss that we see here that wasn't already marked as a compulsory miss is now a capacity miss. Finally, we run a simulation with the actual cache that we're considering. Any miss that was not marked as a compulsory or capacity miss is now a conflict miss. And anything that's a hit here but was previously classified as a miss should be changed back to a hit. The way that I like to think about this process is that we're being greedy. This means that when we classify something as a particular type of miss, a future simulation is not going to go ahead and change this decision. This isn't the best term though, because in reality, if we have a hit in our final configuration, it's a hit no matter what. The reason for this is that these simulations are meant to classify misses, not hits in our final configuration. Now let's think about why we chose to simulate against these particular imaginary caches. If we have an infinite fully associative cache, that means that there's definitely enough space to hold all the data, so none of the misses are capacity misses. Fully associative means that the data can go anywhere, so that means that we can't have any conflict misses. So all we're left with are the compulsory misses, and we can reduce this by bringing in more data to the cache 
every time we're reading from main memory. This increases the likelihood that subsequent cache reads are going to be hits. If we put a size limit on our pretend cache, now all of the new misses must have been due to the size, and any size related miss is a capacity miss. We can obviously reduce the number of these by just increasing the capacity. Finally, when we run it on our actual configuration, the only thing different from our imaginary cache is the associativity. So that means that every new miss must have been due to conflicting addresses mapping to the same lines. We can possibly reduce these misses by increasing the associativity, which gives the data more slots it's allowed to go into and reduces the chance of eviction. So go ahead and try these problems. So now assuming you've tried them, the three steps are listed there and all of the different types of misses that we detect are listed below. So it's helpful to see an example problem being worked out so you know how to organize your own work. And in the next video, we'll go over problem five from the winter 20 final, specifically version C. And if you want to see an, another example being worked out, the EX370 channel has a video going through a full example. And there's going to be a link to that in the description. So that's all we have for you today. Hopefully you enjoyed the video and learned a little bit about caches and how to use the three C's to measure performance. I realized that this video was dense and moved very quickly. That's because this video was meant to be an application for uh, an IA position and was meant to be roughly five minutes long. If you were trying to learn from this video and struggled, I encourage you to pause the video and think about each slide and maybe even use the playback speed feature to go slower. A link to the slides will be in the description below, and of course we're always happy to answer questions in the comments. Be sure to subscribe for more hands-on engineering videos, and we'll see you next time.